think it's going to come in. Well, come back. Yeah, I've tried now to do this a, a couple of times, so hopefully, hopefully we're back online and everything's good. <laughs> it was a bug in the system. <laughs> and it's quite an appropriate thing because my message is called... I'm no bug. How many of us have seen that movie, uh, The Bug's Life? I tell you what, I loved it. An animation. It was just quality. For me, it set a standard for anybody that wanted to get into animation and doing the whole thing. You know. And uh, I just loved that movie. I started collecting all those ones. I don't know. A lot of DVDs. And it really set what was there for everybody to do. You know. Now, a famous line in the movie goes like this. It's a bug eat bug world up the princess. Now this was this was Hopper speaking to the Queen. One of those circle of life kind of things. Now let me tell you how things are supposed to work. The sun grows the food, the ants pick the food, the grasshoppers eat the food. So there you go. There was a system put in place. But, but what, what is, is so weird, weird about this, this whole story, story and I think it, it's, an, it's an, a reflection on society today. It's, it's quite ridiculous that a few grasshoppers could, could convince, convince an entire end colony, starting with the queen, to, to collect food for them through sheer intimidation. Yes, now of course, the ants believed that they had no alternative. So they will willingly gave up their food supply. Unlike them, the ants, we know better than to let a few tyrant or bullies force us to do anything against our will. <laughs> oh my sugary, sugary head. Or do we? Oh, nobody's gonna tell me what to do. I'm my own boss. And look at us. They tell us what to eat, what to wear, what to put into our bodies, what is good for us, how we should travel, when we can travel, what our money's worth. Everything is controlled. We have very little or no say in whatever's going on in our lives. But of course, we're not like those hands. No, we can do anything that we want to. Now one of the parts of the movie that I really, really loved was old Flick's gadget, his harvesting machine. He was brilliant, you know, did you see how good? Like, he does the whole thing and they just overlook him. Now ants are natural harvesters, they'll go out Minding their own business, and they'll track and find food and bring it to the nest and feed. It's not like they, they hide behind a bush, have a quick chat and then go back. No, they, they work for the colony and they work for the queen and they work to, to rear up the young and they do the whole thing. So they harvest. Now unlike them, our dear friends, the, the locusts are a little bit different. While ants harvest, Locusts destroy. Look at what Charles says. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, my great army which are sent among you. Yeah, let's, let's just go back quickly. I want to go back to that other slide over there. Look at this, look at this here. Look, Look what it says about the ants. ants. Proverbs 6, 6, 6 to 8. 8. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no captain, overseer or rulers, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. There's nobody telling the ant, listen, you have to go out there and then you have to collect and then you have... They just know to naturally go and find things 
that are going to benefit the colony. Unlike us selfish human beings where it's me, myself, I, we like to, we like to do everything for ourselves. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So as I showed you, ants harvest but locusts destroy. So now what is it about the, this analogy between ants and locusts and human beings? Why, why is it such a thing? Because, because you know what the truth is. We, we just, just like, like the ants. ants. Yeah. yeah. We, we get deceived, we get lied to, we get manipulated by the devil into believing that we are powerless and that we have no choice but to do what he wants us to do. Now what does the Bible say about that? So in other words, those, Those locusts, locusts with, with thieves. Yeah. yeah. Check it out. John 10, 10 verse 10 a says, The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. There's nothing wholesome about the thief. It's not like, oh, you know, you get a good thief and you get a bad thief. I know there's a story with Robin Hood. It was that he steals from the rich and gives to the poor. That, be that as it may, the, the bottom line in it, he was still a thief. And the Bible says, do not steal. So, <laughs> we put the Robin Hood as the, the hero because he stole from the rich to give to the poor. But the poor, what has happened? The rich were stealing from the poor anyway. So, it's one evil to overcome another evil. And, and that, that doesn't, doesn't work, work very well when, if we're going to live according to God's word. So, so what, what is it that's, that's, that's been happening here? here? Huh? You, you tell me. me. It, it says, says it, that, that God, God is going, going to restore. restore. That's, that's what, what it says, says in that scripture in, in Job. Job. I uh, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts has eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, the chewing locusts, and my great army which are sent among you. There's a great army coming to sort this bugger out. Yes, bugger. I love that. I love that for flavors. It's a bug's life, but I'm no bug. So, so what is, is it, the, uh, the thief's purpose? His sole purpose is to steal. But, but did, did you know? know? Did you know? It's, it's payback, payback time. time. <laughs> yes. And it's coming. Look what it says about payback. Proverbs 6 verse 31. People do not, it says, people do not despise a thief. If he steals to satisfy himself, when he is starving, yet when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. Notice, not once, twice, three, four, five, six times, sevenfold. He may have to give up all the substance of his life. <laughs> hey, that time is coming. You know, and, and it's so funny, funny you, you talk, talk to people and, and, and you know, with this whole pen, pandemic thing and then they say, no, you're going to be controlled by this and controlled by that and I'm not going to do the vaccination because of this and I don't want to vote because of that. And, and everybody's making out like they are free agents in the world that they can do anything that they want to. But that's not entirely true, you know, if you, if you think about it. You, you leave your house, you get into the car, you have to obey, obey the rules of the road. You leave your house, you can't leave your house naked because then again you're going to offend somebody and commit a crime and then you're going to go to jail naked. So, already, you know what I mean? Every, everything's got a rule. So, for us to go around believing that we're totally free to, to do whatever we want to, is isn't entirely true. So, are we any better off than the ants before they decided enough's enough? We're not going to take this anymore. Because what was happening? They were being controlled. They were being manipulated, and and even amongst the ants, 
even amongst the ants, there were problems because some wanted to stick to the old school way. Others would say, no, 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 no we, 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 we got to do something about this. Others would say, and all thinkers, you know what? I'm going to leave this place. No, you can't leave here because of this and that. And I remember in the movie, he catches a dandelion and he, a seed and he like floats away. And he goes to the big city. <laughs> and he did an amazing thing. You see, as an ant, ants hang out with ants. That's what it is. And we kind of like that as well, you know. We get into a holy huddle as the frozen, chosen frozen, or we, we, this group, you know, we, the, yes, we, 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 that group, or we, this group, or, and then we like, yeah, we're quite cool about being in a group. And all it does is causes division. And where is this division? There's a loss of power and a loss of strength. Now, it's, it's very specific about it. Now, but look what he did. I want to show you what he did. He goes and he meets up with all of these, these creatures. Two fleas. I think it was Tuck and Roll was the name of the fleas. I remember that. I looked it up. Then there was the big bug. And then the spider and the praying mantis. And uh, what is that there? Oh, the ladybird. And then, of course, there was the caterpillar. Remember when he was flying along and... <laughs> <laughs> he swallowed a bug. Well, it flying. But be that as it may, he flick goes and he, he speaks to these, these creatures and he convinces them to come back to the colony with him to help him to overcome this tyranny that the locusts have brought upon this ant colony. And, and then, then they recruit the bird as well. Yes. yes. And, and then, then and then they made, made that, that bird. bird. Remember they made that that, that, that bird, bird and they were all like, like going along. Then the bird collapses. It's such a cool movie. I can't. You know, you know they've made part one, two, three, four, everything else, Toy Story, but not Bugs Life. Why is that? Uh, to me, that would have been a classic follow-on. But yeah, uh, I don't know. That's that's just me. You know. And, and so, Flick goes along and he speaks to all of this, uh, all of these creatures, these insects, and he persuades them to come, and they come up with a plan, and they overcome the locusts. Now, you know, that is scriptural. Did you know that? Look at this. Unity is strength. Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. It's like precious oil upon the head running down the beard of Aaron. The running on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down the edge of his garments, it's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Where there is unity, God commands the blessing. How do we expect to overcome a common enemy if we don't stick together and we're not unified and, and single-minded in what lies ahead? God has called us to be disciples. God has called us to shepherd the sheep that are lost, that have been scattered. But, but we're so busy fighting amongst each other and trying to be cool in our own little cool groups and you know we call ourselves this and that and we stick to our stick to our own little group and the enemy is just having a field day. And yet we are called to walk in unity. And I will show you the scriptures in Ephesians chapter four, verse one to four. Therefore, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of your calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called of one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. How cool is that? We get told all of these things and so obvious we live about it and we're excited about it, but we actually don't practice it. No, that's silly. It's like having a very, 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 very cool car and you, you never use it and you never drive in your car. You know? So there we are like a bunch of bugs drawn into the light. We're not supposed to be drawn to the light, we're supposed to be the light. We're supposed to be the salt and the light. People must be drawn to us because of Christ in us, the hope of glory. But we're running around looking for the light. It's not what the Bible says. So what are we going to do about this? Now we're going to go into rebellion and say, well, I'm going to be my own man and I'm going to do this. No, we still got to obey the, the laws of the land. We still got to obey those that are masters of us, not bosses and things like that. So, you know, we must somehow become brain dead and, and decide that we're going to go on this crusade and do our own things and bring discredit to the gospel and discredit to the name of Jesus. No, we're going to be, we're going to be different. It says that we are not to conform to this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That we may know what is the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Is this bugging you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not bugging. I want to encourage us. Let us put aside all our differences and all our nonsense and all our selfish ambitions and let us be as a united front, a single voice against the common enemy and like those ants saying, no more. You're not going to come into my home, you're not going to come into my marriage, you're not going to come into my relationships and my business, you're not going to come into my life and blatantly steal, kill and destroy. No, no, no more. The, the bug, bug. <laughs> the bug <laughs> stops here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just consider this. Thank you so much for your time. I must say, it, it took me extra long. It took me nearly whew, about 40 minutes, 50 minutes just to get going. It, we had stopped and started a few times, but I, you know, I was so determined. I really knew that I want to share this very simple story. I'm no bug. I'm not going to be trod on. I'm not going to be sat on. I'm not going to be robbed. I'm drawing the line. I'm saying that's far enough for because of Great is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Thank you so much for your time. Have a blessed and wonderful evening. I trust this will be an amazing, relaxing weekend. Use the time wisely. Share the gospel. Encourage one another. If you see those that have walked away, encourage them to come back. If you see those that have fallen in sin, gently, gently bear them up. Thank you so much. And as you know, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. Goodbye. God bless until next time. This is Uncle Russ signing off.